Light Leaders, we are going to look at February 6th's uh, lesson plan for February 6th, because that's what I said. Um, we'll start with reviewing, and then I'll essentially teach the lesson, and um, then go into that the activities and what the, how to link those to the lesson, in case that's helpful. So we'll give this a whirl and see how it goes. So over the last month, this last series, uh, we focused on giving up our lives for God. And what does that actually mean? And in week one, uh, we talked about um, where are you, where am I in my relationship with God? Are you still making that decision about whether or not to become a Christian? Are you a new Christian who's just beginning uh, to learn more and more about him and uh, things like that? Are you a Christian who's who's been doing this for a while and you are paying attention to the Holy Spirit? You know what your God jobs are. You hear you hear from the Spirit. You've got God fruit popping out, that kind of stuff. Or are you been a Christian, but you're not really doing, you're not really growing in him. You're not reading your Bible or praying or participating in church or life group, things like that, that will help you grow in your relationship with him. So, so that was week one. Then we talked about what's in your basket from the story of uh, the true Bible happening of Jesus feeding the multitudes um, from the little boy's lunch that his mom made him the lunch and then he was willing to share his lunch. It wasn't anything special. It wasn't anything fancy. Um, they both just were doing their ordinary life. And so what's in our ordinary lives um, are stuff that we can give God and go, here, do your do your miracles with this. Uh, then we talked about um, from Moses and the Exodus and when God gave them the instructions to build the tabernacle, what uh, that he supernaturally skilled some of them. Some of them had these abilities already and he made them even better, things like that. We looked at what are our skills? What has God made us good at that we can go use this? Uh, then it was um, last week on, um, so how did they accomplish building the tabernacle? How did they accomplish uh, creating all of these fancy um pieces, instruments that were used in worship to God, the altar and all the bronze and the gold and all of this. And it was the people gave uh, what they had to God to be able to use this. And they actually had more than enough. They had too much. The builders had to say, stop. Um, and so what do we have in our lives? Money, time, energy that that we can give to God to use his way and and make that sacrifice in that way. So this week, this is kind of the closing week in this series, and we're going to be in Colossians, and I'm going to read from the message version. Um, and so it's Colossians chapter 1, verses 9 through 14, and I'm going to read the whole passage, and then we'll break it down. So be assured that from the first day we heard of you, we have not stopped praying for you asking God to give you wise minds and spirits attuned to his will, and so acquire a thorough understanding of the ways in which God works. We pray that you'll live well for the master, making him proud of you as you work hard in his orchard. As you learn more and more how God works, you will learn how to do your work. We pray that you will have the strength to stick it out over the long haul not the grim strength of gritting your teeth, but the glory strength God gives. It is a strength that endures the unendurable and spills over into joy, thanking the Father who has made us strong enough to take part in everything bright and beautiful that he has for us. God rescued us from dead-end alleys and dark dungeons. He has set us up in the kingdom of God he loves so much. The Son who got us out of the pit we were in got rid of the sins we were doomed to keep repeating. So first, if we go back to verse 9, and this will be on the screen with some underlines and things like that, we'll see um, it's our job to be praying for ourselves and for other people, right? So it says, we haven't stopped praying for you. So we're, we're to intercede for others. And what are we praying for? 
wise minds and spirit attuned to his will. And I've recently heard the definition of wisdom as knowledge plus grace. So wisdom is smarts plus that grace from God, that ability to go, we may not do things the same way. And there's, there's, there's squish here and there in different ways. And I can, I can forgive you and you can forgive me and things like that. So, so wisdom and a spirit attuned to his will, attuned to knowing what God wants, what's going on and to pay attention to what God's doing. So, so it's that it's the Holy Spirit. It, it's being aware of listening to the Holy Spirit and all of that. And so why, why do we pray to have a wise mind and a spirit that's paying attention to God? It is so that we will understand the ways in, that God works. And I thought it was really cool that this says ways. It's plural. It's not one way. God doesn't work only one way. God works lots of ways. And so it's so that we can understand how God works. And then if we go on from there, it says, um, we're going to be working hard in his orchard. We pray that you will live well for the master, making him proud of you as you work hard in his orchard. And that's his orchard. It's what he has planted and he is in charge of. It's not my orchard. I didn't, I didn't buy any land. I didn't plant a tree. I didn't plant a seed. Lord knows I didn't create a seed. That's God. God does all of that. So we're learning how to work in his orchard where he created and where he wants us to be. And it's work. It's not play in his orchard. It's work in his orchard. Third, why is it important to learn how he wants us to work? The next verse says, as you learn more and more how God works, you will learn how to do your work. So that goes back to that ways, the plural ways in which God works. And the point is that my work doesn't look like your work. Even if we're doing the same job, he probably has different ways for us to do it. So he wants us to know the way to do our job. He wants us he wants to help us figure out what is my job and how do I do it. Um following from there, it's pretty cool. Talks about strength. So it says we pray that you will have the strength to stick it out over the long haul. So it says it's going to take strength. This isn't easy. Loving God is easy. Trusting God is sometimes hard. Doing our God jobs frequently is hard. He asks us to do things that that are not easy or natural for us. Sometimes he does. Sometimes our God jobs are easy, but a lot of times they're not. And so he says, they're praying for us to have the strength to do this over the long haul. It's like learning a new habit or working on something, learning math, whatever it is. It's a long job, not a short job and to keep doing it day after day after day. But he says specifically what kind of strength he wants us to have. He says, we pray that you will have the strength of the long haul, not the grim strength of gritting your teeth. Uh, I can't remember, Corey was eating something the other day and his teeth were rubbing together and I almost had to come apart and the kids were dying laughing at me. But it's that that grit that you can feel it through all the bones in your head when your teeth rub together. Not that I'm just going to bite down and I'm going to do this and I'm like, by God, I'm going to make this happen. And you heard that. You heard that. By God, he said to do it. So, or it's important or it's whatever. I'm going to make this happen. I'm going to do it. And he says, no, that's not the kind of strength. That's not what we're doing here. He says, but the glory strength that God gives. What a glory strength looks like. He says it endures the unendurable and spills over into joy. So when we're doing these hard jobs that take a long time, God will give us strength that endures and, and lasts that whole time, but even more creates joy. We're we're experiencing joy in the midst of us. We're not, we're not stressed. We're not angry. We have peace. Even when it's hard, we have joy. 
even when it's hard. And then he says next, why? Because God makes us strong enough to take part in everything bright and beautiful that he has for us. God has amazing things for us. Doesn't mean necessarily rich or every toy we ever wanted. Doesn't mean we get the dinner and dessert we want every day, right? God's blessings are different. Sometimes that's exactly what they are. He says he wants us to have everything bright and beautiful he's already put together for us. But it takes us leaning into him and trusting him in order to see those bright and beautiful things, to receive those bright and beautiful things. And then the closing verse talks about he rescued us from our sin. That's why he wants it. He rescued us from our sin. He set up bright and beautiful things. He has amazing for us. If we will give him our lives and trust him with it, we will have joy as we go. It's pretty awesome. So the um, application activity today is a self-portrait. Um, and so for the creative kiddos, it's going to be a self-portrait. They're going to have mirrors on the table. They're going to draw, complete their hair, their faces, all that kind of stuff. And then somewhere on here, whether it's, you know, it's feeling super creative, it can be their hair is words or up a top or flip it over, put words on the back, whatever it is. I want them to write what they think their work is. Like this said, pray that you'll understand the ways that God works in, but and then you will learn your work. And I believe that our work changes over time, right? Maybe in multiple times a day, depending on where we are and what's happening. So what are the things that, that we have seen, because we've been studying this for a month now, that God has given us that's our work? Um, the other kiddos, the game will be, uh, we'll have a track taped out on the floor. Uh, you'll need partners, roughly your same size, even if that's not your best friend. And um, you're going to do wheelbarrow races, remembering each one doing their work. So if whoever is holding the feet is going too fast and is, and is pushing, trying to propel, then that's not their job. And they're going to make that other person carpet burn their face, which hurts really bad. So don't do that, right? So if the person who's on the floor is not moving their arms and, and going, then they can't succeed together. So we're going to practice doing our work and staying in our lane, not judging them on how they're doing it, being in charge of us. And what am I doing? Am I doing my job? Am I doing it right? Am I doing it well? Cool. Thank you guys for leading.